Hey everybody, this is Evan Abrams, and today we're going to talk about graphs. Whoa, whoa, hold on, let me help you contain your excitement. I did say graphs. It might not seem that interesting, but I can assure you at the end of this tutorial, you're going to know a lot more about making interesting motion using After Effects for all your motion graphics. Motion graph, motion graphics. There's a pun in here somewhere, but I don't know about it. So let's look at some examples of what I'm actually talking about so we can actually learn some things. Graphs! So this is a graph, and it's going to help us understand how a property changes over time. Uh, we're going to use a simple property that has only one vector, and that's going to be graphs. the uh, scale. But when we start talking about the graph editor and how values change over time, it's important to know that there are many ways that, that can happen using keyframes. I know the keyframes look simple, but there's about four or five types of keyframes. I'm just going to talk about them really briefly right now because they're important. Graphs. Now the first keyframe is called the hold keyframe and this holds a value then holds the value and continues holding the value. Uh, a hold keyframe means do nothing until you see another keyframe. Graphs. This next one is called the linear keyframe and you can see on the graph up there that it is a bunch of lines going between the keyframes. So value zero, straight up to 100, straight down to zero. If you're familiar with algebra, you'll know that this is a linear slope, is what you're looking at. So let's go back to the algebra class and we'll, uh, we'll go with that. Graphs. Another form is called the easy ease, and you can see how this is kind of just like an easy, lazy curve. Basically it means you're easing out of a keyframe or easing into a keyframe. So the value is, is kind of slowing as it gets there. Graphs. This next one is the continuous Bezier, and there's two types of Beziers, and a Bezier, if you've used something like Illustrator or Photoshop or something to work with paths, or even in here to work with paths, uh, you know that a Bezier is a, is a type of curve that's, that's influenced by two points, sort of like a line that comes off of the point and that influences the curvature. So when you look at the curve of this, uh, you can see there's been a Bezier applied to all the points where they're pointing is different than with the easy ease. So this is a different way of bending and manipulating the points. So this one's continuous and the other one is called the auto Bezier. That's about it. Let's get into what these look like on the graph, but first I want you to see them all side by side so you can really compare graphs. How the difference in the motion graph or the time graph or whatever you want to call this graph what the differences in these things graph actually means to how this one property is moving. All of these things have the same keyframe, 0, 100, 0, all spaced apart the same number of frames. But I've altered the graph of each of them so they all behave and look differently. So hopefully that helps as we get into it. It's time to turn this bad boy over to After Effects and actually make something cool. Graphs. Okay, so inside After Effects, uh, just so you don't freak out on me, we're only looking at two windows, because I only care about two windows. One of them is, of course, the timeline, and the other one is the uh, viewing window. So, that's what these two windows are. You can look at the project window or whatever if you want, but I don't really care about them, and you shouldn't care about them either for this tutorial. So here's the thing I'm going to try to help you make. Uh, it's like a dot... The dot does some crazy stuff, more dots, you know, whatever. Um, but the thing that we're going to be working on is getting familiar with the graph editor. So the first thing to do is figure out how to open it and use it. So if you want to access the graph editor, it's right here. Click this. Um, and then it changes your timeline, which has time on the top and then the layers here. Uh, it changes that to be time on the top and then values here. It's going to make a graph. Let's just look at some content real quick in the graph. You notice it was empty, and that's really scary because now everything is gone. But really, all the animation that I'm doing is happening in this layer, and everything in here is either a black or white circle that is moving or rotating or whatever. If I select all of these um, and just real quick pull up the graph editor for those, you can see there is a heap of lines going on and I know it's a different way to look at information and it might actually be a very uncomfortable way for you to look at information but you know rest assured this is actually a really good way especially with something like this to really understand you know what's happening so you know hopefully it helps 
to have that information here. And I'm just going to show you really briefly how to navigate this thing. Right now you're seeing a lot of information and that is because I have not only show selected properties but show animated properties checked. Um, if you have selected properties only it means you have to go in and you have to select a property in order to see it. Um, but if you have show animated properties then by selecting everything you get to see all the animated properties of those layers. So that can be helpful. Uh, you can change what kind of graph. Uh, right now I just use auto select what graph is important. But uh, you can look at just values. You can look at just a value graph or you can look at a speed graph which shows the speed of everything. Two different types of information depending on what you want to edit. So just keep that in mind as well. We're going to work with the values just because that's a little bit of an easier thing to wrap your head around. This is about selecting things using a transform box to alter points. Uh, maybe it gives it to you, maybe it doesn't, but uh, if you're only interested in altering the arms, then uh, we'll do that. Uh, the snap is for having things snap to other things, like other points, etc. This here is about zooming, so when you resize, it'll automatically go to the height of the things. This makes it easy to look at. And this button here, fit all graphs to view, that can be helpful. Um, and then there's also fit selection to view, which can be helpful as well. Navigating in this view is difficult, and it only gets better with practice, so just keep in mind these handy tools. When you select a point, you get whole new options right over here. Uh, you can edit that keyframe with all this stuff, which is the same as if you right click and go, you know, edit, or you can go uh, keyframe interpolation, whatever. It's the same as doing that. You can also convert the keyframe to a hold keyframe, or a linear keyframe, or an auto bezier, or an easy ease, or other kinds of easy ease just with these buttons. These are like quick buttons for you. And that pretty much wraps up it. To edit things, you just select them, grab some handles, wiggle them around. So hopefully that makes sense for you. And what I'm going to do now is just kind of remember what I'm looking at here, and we're going to try to make that over from scratch. So first thing to do, new composition. That looks like a fine type of composition settings. Boom. And we're going to go new. First off, give myself a new solid, make it white. And this will be like our background for everything. Uh, then we're going to go, we're going to get an object to play around with. So let's get an ellipse. Let's make the first one black. Okay. Um, we want to kind of change the size to make it uniform. So pull open the ellipse, contents, ellipse, ellipse path, change the size, unlink those 500 by 500 ought to do us. Um, and we only want to care about the scale. So hit S, pull up the scale. And uh, let's get ready to keyframe. So I'm just going to push ahead a little bit and then uh, start keyframing. So click the stopwatch, keyframe on, set the first value at, uh, I guess, zero. It's good. Go ahead a little bit, maybe make it 100. Go ahead the same amount and uh, go back down to zero. Right now, these are linear keyframes. That is really not exciting. You know, I'm going to level with you. That's actually really boring. So remember, linear is boring. Let's just snap this graph to the view, and you can see line, line, meh, yawn, yawn is what I'm saying. So select all of those. Let's easy ease them. Let's try that first and see how that how that does for us. All right, well, that's mildly better. So the easy ease, as you can see, it goes eases into and out of the points. Um, that's all right. Let's speed it up. So select the point, grab the handle here, hold down shift to keep it on the line, and then pull it out. You can only go as far with the handle as there are keyframes around you. So it kind of it bottoms out, right? Because this keyframe can only influence at a maximum when this keyframe starts. So that's kind of one of the rules. Um, how did that do? Did that fix anything for us? Yeah, that kind of did actually, because it goes. So that's kind of good. Uh, I'm into that. Let's just 
tighten this up maybe a little bit and tighten this one down as well just so it accelerates up a little bit more that's good I'm happy with that uh, also let's select these all and copy them and then uh, paste them right on the end boom so one down two that's pretty good it's like throwing something up in the air you know and in fact let's select these two things down here um, and let's uh, let's make those an auto bezier so auto bezier is that it will define for me what the best fit is um, yeah that's a way better fit so kinda helps us out to get this good bounce bounce now I don't know if you want to add some more bounces do whatever you want I don't really care um, because we need to move on and make another element of some kind so we could have this thing come up and explode into a bunch of colors or whatever you want to do but for my purposes I believe I will just take these two things copy those paste them um, I'm gonna edit this value here up to 250 so I double clicked on it and then just typed in 250 and yay and bam. so it's getting big in fact that's definitely way too big so I'm gonna go here I'm gonna dial that down a little bit to around there um, and also I'm gonna change its motion I'm gonna drag this up to be like that bam so that it so that we bounce bounce and explode so boom that's good and its value will continue on forever because now it's time to make something else so I kinda like this curve and I, I like the way this curve is going so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this layer and then um, you know I'll select the scale on its layer and the only points I'm really interested in are the last two those are the good points and so I don't actually need the layer to continue on anymore before that and so really the life of this layer is starting here and getting big and I'm gonna change it from black to white because I want contrast and I'm gonna shift it ahead so that it creates this sort of ring so burn burn kind of thing so as soon as what I would like is for as soon as this first black layer when it gets to like its maximum as big as it's gonna get then we shoot off another one big big kind of thing and I think that'll do for that big big and I might want to actually make those closer and in fact let's use the graph editor to decide where we want that overlap to be um, so you can see here on the two things that we've got going on we look at them both and we can see the point at which this layer will surpass this one so in fact let me just uh, do that let me just help it surpass that a little bit and in fact let's just alter this thing down kind of like this Actually, this could probably come out a little bit more. This editor, this version of the editor, makes being able to edit values a lot more interesting. So, what does this look like? I think it kind of comes out of nowhere. Um, it also takes a bit of trial and error. So, yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, let's see what that did. Okay, so far so good. Um, let's go here and actually let's cut off this bottom layer. That's where it can end. I do that by holding down Alt and then hitting the end square brackets. Um, or you can just come back here and cumbersomely do that. But So what do we got? We've got a thing that comes up, comes up again, comes up big, and then is has this ring come out. And now, one of the cool things that I liked was a bunch of them coming out one after another. So let's duplicate this. Let's offset it a little bit. Let's change its fill to black. Cool. So what does that do? Actually, let's offset that a little bit. Okay. 
Okay, so let's try to keep this gravy train rolling. Let's have a whole whack of these come out. Um, I'm just going to go duplicate, 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 duplicate. How many do I got? One, two, three, four, five, six. And we want every other one to be white. So this one, that one, and this one. Fill, move it to white. Okay. And let's offset these, you know, a little bit. So let's offset this. I'm going to hold down Alt, hit page down. Hold this one, two, maybe, and then one, two, three, and then one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four, five, and then, you know, just the top one, one, two, three, four, five, six. Kind of interesting, eh? That's a, that's a little bit interesting. So that's how you can create a pretty interesting ripple wave effect coming out of this thing, is by taking the same curve and offsetting it. And you can look into the motion graph and you can see why this works. Um, that here, they kind of come up and they lightly overlap each other. When you look at the curve, you can see how as just as one is slowing down, another one is coming up to supplant it. So, I mean, the big thing is... You, you don't want to get too carried away, you don't want to get too wacky with everything, but in general, this is a pretty simple way to uh, make that happen for yourself. So hopefully this teaches you how to make some of what I did. The rest of it, though, I will say right away that you should do it by experimentation. We've only touched on a tiny part of how to use the graph editor. You know, we could have gone in here, grabbed these points, and said, you know what, give me a speed graph instead. Let's have some real fun with this. When you come in here and you just grab these points and you just start monkeying around with them, you know, in, in no particular semblance of order or rhyme or reason, just grab some points and go crazy. You know, the results are not always pretty, obviously. The graph editor is a great way to be able to get into the nuances of motion. When you look at this, like, even if you look at all the keyframe values, this doesn't really tell you much about what you've even created. You know, like, here's a keyframe, there's a keyframe, what are all these keyframes doing? You don't really know. I mean, you have some idea by staring and looking at them and playing it back, but when you look in here and you can see visually what you're doing, it gives you a way better appreciation for what, is the, what does the keyframe mean? What does it even mean to keyframe? What's happening with these values over time? And it really gives you a nuanced appreciation for that. Before I finish this thing off, uh, who wants to see me make it look cool? Uh, we can totally do that. Let's do that right now. Uh, what, what I did in the original example um, is we've got actually a bunch of stuff going on. So uh, up at the top, you know, without looking at this or the vignette or anything, there is an adjustment layer up there that's applying a fast blur and a curves to some stuff. Under that, there's an adjustment layer that has been set to screen and is applying a ramp of some kind. If we get rid of that, everything looks kind of normal. Um, keep going down, there's that pre-comp. There's a ramp down here on this adjustment layer. Um, and then finally a white solid. So you can see there's actually a lot of things that go into making the look as it was. Um, and, you know, all in, they're all interesting and necessary. So uh, I encourage you to play around, check that stuff out, enjoy the time graph. Um, hopefully this gives you a new tool in your toolbox that you can pull out and do cool stuff with. I know it's not as interesting as making a specific thing, but I hope this this actually helps you out to make other things. So uh, I'm Evan Abrams. If you have any questions about how to use the graph editor, just uh, drop me a line. I'll try to help you out. Uh, your best bet is to put a comment in here, and I'll try to get to them uh, when I can. Um, and if there's anything more complicated you need to know, need to know, you can always send me an email. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, you know, comment, like, enjoy, and uh, I'll see you around the internet. Graphs.